All right, welcome back to Interview with Sensei number we don't know, but you probably know better than yeah. us. Um, man, it's been it's been quite some time since we put a video up. I've been going through a lot of stuff, uh, you know, life uh, stuff, girlfriends, all that good stuff. Girlfriend, only friends. Uh, you know, uh, yeah. So yeah, I, mean, oh, I had a cough or two. <coughs> I had to get better from that. So uh, excuse our our uh, late posting, but uh, welcome back. And we have a special guest set up for today's show, Anthony Cummins. That's right. Big fan of his. Absolutely. We did a video about him a little while back, and then we got to talking, and uh, I had said, uh, hey, you know, you should come on our show. We don't really do guest appearances, but why not start? Why not? And what a perfect first guest. Yeah. And then famed ninja author, Anthony Cummins. He's got tons of ninja books out there. Um, they're available worldwide. And if you're not if you're not up to speed on who this man is, you got to Google this guy, Anthony Cummins. And uh, we should put his name out here, right there, is his name. I'm pretty sure he was on National Geographic too, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. He's on the Discovery Channel. Discovery you can Channel. See him on like the History Channel. The guy's everywhere. So awesome! Can't wait to have him on. Yeah. We're actually waiting for him to set up his equipment. Mm -hmm. um, he should be ready in a few minutes or so. He's broadcasting from Japan. From, straight from Japan. Which is pretty exciting to do our interview. Awesome. Yeah. So thank you to Anthony. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. For, it's going to be great. For doing this. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right. So wait. I think this is him now. Anthony. Okay. Well, thanks so much for being on our show, Anthony. Uh, okay. Uh, welcome. And uh, thank you so much for, for uh, coming on. Interview with Sensei. Great to have you. No, it's a pleasure. Thank you very much, and I'm looking forward to the uh, the questions you've asked. Right. Okay. So, well, Bryce got a first question for you. Uh, Anthony, I I'm big in the jitsu, and and I I love all these movies that came out in in our generation and and generations before us. All those black and white movies. I'm sure you've seen, but uh, I always want to know what your favorite ninja movie is. My favorite ninja movie, without a shadow of a doubt, has got to be. Sakura Killers from the 1980s. Uh, I actually put it up on YouTube as well. It's got to be the corniest film. Well, no, it's not the corniest. It's a very corny film. Now, the reason I love it is because when I was a boy, it was about four or five when it came out, all the ninja films were really bad. I mean, like rockets, rocket launchers, swords, and just, you know, like Pray for Death was there and all that sort of stuff. But Sakura Killers came out and it was just genius. The opening scene to Sakura Killers is by far one of the best ninja scenes put on film. And uh, especially the guys, you've got the guy in the red ninja suit and the guy in the green ninja suit with the devil masks. Absolutely, you know, it spurred my love of ninjas for years. And still to this day I can watch it and be like, even though it's totally incorrect, I can watch it and be like, yes. And the worst is probably... Um, uh, last Samurai. That, that, that really annoyed me that, but we'll get on to that. Holy cow, Sakura Killers! I totally forgot about that movie! Yeah, was, totally was corny, though. That totally. Was very corny. Absolutely corny. <laughs> and The Last Samurai you hated. That's that's interesting because we don't like that one either. I hated that movie. Hated it. Hey, there are no black people in it. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> yes. Yes, damn it. Put some black people in the yeah. Samurai. We were Samurai too. Yeah. Hey, if a white guy could be a samurai, yeah, right? a black guy hey, could totally be a let's samurai. Let's go. Get Samuel L. Jackson in there. All right. Absolutely. I hated the last samurai movie. In fact, we got to throw up the link for me. Like, I, I was once lecturing. Uh, I was lecturing at a high school, and a kid asked about it, and I started going off about how much I hated that last samurai movie. So, throw that link. That's up right. There. The, uh, the that? yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's throw that link up there. All right, I'm the next one with the uh, with the question, Anthony. Um, I, I've always been fascinated with the different ninjutsu claims, and you know, you need an expert. You need somebody that can read the text. And the the old scrolls are so old. It's like, where would you find, um, you know, a a master linguist that understands uh, that that ancient kanji? and understands how to, how to do that. Like, where would you even come up with that person? So you found uh, Yoshie, and how did you find her? How did you convince her to go on this endeavor 
this crazy like let's translate all the ancient ninja scrolls how'd you how'd you find this person and how'd you get her on board Right, I used to be an English teacher for a company called Shane, and um, I was trying to, I'd already done a year is in Nova, which is another English company, and then I, English teaching company, then I, of course I was training at the Bujin Can and all that then. I was just like, there's got to be something more to this ninjutsu than this, so let me have a go. So I went to Iga Ueno Ninja Museum, and I got some of their pamphlets and blurb and blah blah blah, and I took it and I gave it to all my students, and, uh, and I said, do this as homework, you know, translation. So, um... They translated what they could, and it was, to be honest, it was terrible, most of it, it just couldn't, and I wasn't really interested because what I was getting back wasn't really, they didn't really know or it was too difficult, but Yoshie just used to slip me these notes, it was like amazing stuff, it was just like brilliant, so uh, we went for coffee a few times in the local bakery before lessons and all that, and we started chatting. And then we wrote a book together in Japanese, and I was telling her about, and obviously throughout this time she knew about my love of Shinobi. And we should have started this much earlier, we should have started it about 2006, but instead we started it about 2008, 2009. So, because um, we did this English, uh, this Japanese English language book first, so uh, that which took a long time. And of course that was the days before Skype had just started and we were doing it by email. So uh, I just said to her, I said, Yoshi, there's you know, a big market for this. I want to know all about this. There are people out there who want to know. Do you want to do it? And of course at first, typical Japanese, she was like, oh, I'm not good enough. She was superbly amazing. It's just ridiculous how good she is. I'm not saying she's perfect, guys, by a long shot. Not everything she says is correct. But she's waves above the other Japanese people, waves. And she did a BA uh, honours in linguistics from apparently a very prestigious university. Now I didn't know this university was that good, but allegedly it is. So uh, she didn't say so, other people have said so, they'd be like, she's done it where? So um, she's very good and she stuck with me. We've become equal business partners, uh, for anybody who's interested, and we literally just do it together as a team. And we've put the other people in as well for bits we don't know. So with, while I'm the face of all this, Yoshe is without doubt the powerhouse, the guns are behind the lot. When she says it, you know, when she goes and reads something, it's pretty much right. It's good. Wow, man, that's amazing. Yoshe does so much more than I thought, man. She must be a real powerhouse. Yeah. Like you said, she's pretty hot too. <laughs> How do you know she's hot? Oh, well, you can imagine Japanese chicks are usually pretty hot. When's the last time you've seen an ugly Japanese chick? Exactly. Uh, alrighty. Well, I'm getting some work done here. <laughs> so that, yeah, that is it's interesting that you guys are equal partners. That's pretty cool. Well, keep that in mind. Right. <laughs> so how many ninjutsu... My question is, my question is, how many, how many ninjutsu ru... Um, are out there, you know, how many have you um, been in contact with, how many have contacted you, because I know there's a lot of claims out there, and I'm interested in, you know, how many have you spoken to, and how many have, have you reached out to any of them? I'm sorry, this is a difficult question, this is, how many real ones? I've never found one that's proved themselves yet. Now, be careful how you take what I say. I have never found a ninja school that's proved themselves was. I'm not saying they're fake, I'm saying they've never proved themselves. When they prove themselves, they'll be real, but nobody's done it yet. So, um, I've had contact with loads, I've had some crazy, crazy, I've had emails where people say, Anthony, do you remember the day we met? And then they'll mention a day where I've done a video about where I've been in Japan, and said, on that day, I know for well I've met no Westerners that day, but they were Western, and they said, yeah, we met, and he was like, the crazy emails have started coming. So, my point is, is that most of the people... Um, that email me um, claiming they're a ninja school start getting a bit on the oh, dubious side but that being said I've met some really nice people through um, people who believe they're doing the real thing or they think the master taught me so I've met some really nice people and I've met some really crazy people but um, no there's no ninja there's nobody that's really come from a ninja school so nobody's proved themselves anyway Huh. That's, that's interesting. That's interesting. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's we really have to remark about what he's actually saying here because he's saying that not that there aren't a lot of different claims out there, just that none of the claims have uh, have been able to tie themselves to history. So that's that's a hard thing to do. You know, you, you're saying that you're a ninjutsu school, you're a ninja school. Can you tie your roots all the way back? That's pretty cool. So he hasn't found any that can yet. That's interesting. Um, very insightful. Very. Uh, there was a lot said there. 
And um, being that you can't, I'm thinking that there would be there would be a lot of threats involved mm. because we're not just talking. We're talking about a couple of things here. We're talking about uh, one, a man's passion. Right, a lot of people are passionate about being nin ninja. Oh gosh, being yeah. passionate about ninjutsu practitioners, right? Mm -hmm. And you'd be messing with that. But the other thing that you you'd be messing with as as a historian is that you'd be messing with a man's livelihood. Being that uh, this man's a professional, he's a historian. He's um, uh, he's really Anthony's really become the the expert in the field. No one's really touching his work, so being that you're the expert, okay, uh, you know, in the field of historical ninjutsu, right, <clears throat> the, the question is, have you received threats? Because you're kind of, you know, messing with a person's livelihood, stating that, you know, this person who's stating that he's legitimate, right, can't really prove it. So you must have received some, like, interesting threats and things. Threats. Yes, plenty. In fact, at the beginning of my work, I got loads of threats. Um, there's one very famous, now I sh probably shouldn't be saying this, but there's one very famous Bujinkan, um, I'm not going to say famous, but he's well known, people know who he is, Bujinkan person who um, offered me a sword fight and offered to basically that. And uh, I've told everyone that I'll keep it secret of what happened in that until, you know, unless he crosses what was happened. Uh, what he's promised, so yep, yeah, I've been offered sword fights, I've received hundreds of threatening sort of emails, the words cunt, the words wanker, the words bellend are often tagged on to the end of these things, and I apologize, apologies for swearing, but that's the calm down version of what I get. Bellend? Bellend? What? That's some new curse word from another universe. Yeah, bellend. That that just that don't even sound mean. That sounds like a type of melon, a bellin. 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 We're saying bad things right now. Oh, we're cursing at each other right now. We're saying we're saying bellin. What? <laughs> who, who called you a bellin, dude? I don't even know what that is. Well, anyway, we're gonna Google that. Let's Google. 